one will cut the nets and punch their ticket to the big dance in just a couple of hours. It's the Red Wolves in black, and it's the Dukes in white. We are underway here from Pensacola. Caleb Fields, the starting point guard, number zero in black, a first-team all-performer, paced the way yesterday, 23 points and six assists in the victory for the Red Wolves. That was an upset over the number one seed, Appalachian State. He gets it up top. Five on the shot clock. Going to have to fire up a desperation heave. A great suffocating defense by James Madison. They have been terrific on the defensive end all year long. A really good team at choking off the three-point line. Defensive patience might come into play tonight. JMU starting five. Mark mentioned the player of the year, but it doesn't stop there. Bickerstaff is the newcomer of the year, and Noah Friedel is not just a three-point shooter. He is a scary, dangerous weapon for the Dukes, who was outstanding in the game yesterday. Yeah, he went for 28 in that semifinal win, that tough semifinal win over Texas State. These are the top two scoring teams in the Sun Belt as Edwards has it rejected. Great rim protection that time, but a second effort and another block. Two blocks by Isaiah Nelson, the 6'10 sophomore. The Arkansas State starting five. Fields, Hicks, and Todd. A three-guard lineup that is awfully deadly. And Nelson, you just saw, saw protecting the rim for the Red Wolves defensively. Open three on the way. Knocked down by Darian Ford. Yeah, Ford 37%. Didn't have a very good semifinal, but did go for 18 against Louisiana in the quarters. Two-time Arkansas Gatorade Player of the Year. Here comes Friedel. Cut off at the baseline. That's Wooden. He is their glue guy, been around a long time with this program. Sets up an open three for Wooden, and he splashes it. 42% on the year for Julian Wooden. Yeah, both of these teams will do a lot of switching on their man-to-man -man defense. So which team can find easier shots? Todd up top. We see a lot of tight man-to-man -man defense by both teams. Jumper left short, tapped around, an offensive rebound. Straightaway three, Fields has it rim off. And a nice job boxing out by Xavier Brown. Mike, I feel like Arkansas State's offensive rebounding is kind of their secret weapon. They get more than 12 a game. Brown from way downtown, Xavier Brown, the sophomore who didn't get into the starting lineup until February, but he's become a huge factor in the games for the Dukes. Yeah, he made three long-distance shots in the semifinal win, only 31% on the year. Maybe he likes shooting here in the Bay Center. Friendly rims, as we've seen a lot of great offense throughout this tournament. Sometimes you don't know what a neutral site is going to have in store. This guy can shoot anywhere. Misses the first attempt. That's Friedel, one of the top three-point shooters in the league. Yeah, he has the green light at all times. Another block, a follow, no good. Tenacious offensive rebounding and a foul drawn by the Red Wolves. They are not afraid to crash. They are led by that man. That's Brian Hodson, a long time. Nate Oates assistant at both Buffalo and Alabama. He got the job. He followed Jeff Puritan, the former administrator at Alabama, who made a phone call and said, I'm giving you your first break. And all he's done in year number one is take a moribund program and put him on the brink of an NCAA tournament appearance. A terrific job by Coach Hudson in year one. Well, he has really developed Nelson at the free throw line. Nelson a year ago was just 49%. That's up to 68%. And that's a good look at Nelson, the sophomore, who's made a sophomore leap in production. And calmly sinks the free throws. A one-point game here in the opening minutes in Pensacola Sun Belt Championship. Last year, Louisiana won it. This year, it'll be either James Madison or Arkansas State. Ball comes down low and almost an and one. Bickerstaff will go to the free throw line. 
Now here's another coach that's starting to increase his stock. That is Mark Byington. Mark Byington, who was at Georgia Southern. He was an assistant under Bobby Cremens at College of Charleston before that. They've won 12 in a row. They won the first 14 games of the season, and they put everybody on notice on opening night when they went to the Breslin Center and knocked off Michigan State. Mike, think about this. Mark Byington's team, James Madison, they're unbeaten so far in four months of the season. <laughs> November, December, February, and so far in March, all of their losses came in the month of January. What a year it's been for JMU on the gridiron, a memorable season, and potentially on the hardwood as well. A whistle will give it back to the Dukes here. Yeah, this is an offensive foul moving without the ball on Todd, setting an illegal screen. When these two teams met in Jonesboro on February 7th, James Madison got off to a quick start and really dictated the way that game was played. It got close at the end, but going into the last 90 seconds, James Madison led by double figures the entire game. Oh, three, Xavier Brown pick it up where he left off last night. Oh, my goodness. Sophomore from Williamsburg, Virginia. They rely on him for leadership and poise. He's supplied plenty of it so far in this tournament. Angle pass down low to Nelson. Banging bodies. Missed it. Bickerstaff held his ground. Wide open three, left short by Wooden. Arkansas State's got to do a better job, though, in transition defense. That was way too clean of a look. Drive and kick and knocked out of bounds. It will remain Red Wolves basketball. You don't. You've got to make shots. You're telling me you're going to give me two offensive-minded teams? I love it. The top two scoring offenses in the Sun Belt all year long. That's not to say that they don't rebound and defend well, but they can certainly fill it up from outside and inside. Right now it's James Madison filling it up to a five-point lead. Open three. The Red Wolves will fire up early and often. That's Ford on another bucket to make it a two-point game. Yeah, the Red Wolves shoot 27 threes a game, and in league play, almost make 10 per. Mention the ties for the coaching staff of Arkansas State to Alabama's Nate Oates. Just like Alabama, if you've covered the tide and you've seen them play, a ton of threes and a ton of layups. They do not believe in the mid-range game. Fade and fire three, rims off, tapped around, and gobbled up by the Red Wolves. That's a quality possession defensively, though, by Arkansas State. Both these teams will run a lot of five-out action. They do it in a little bit of a different way because Nelson will always look to roll to the rim. Strong take that time by Darian Ford. He's off to a red-hot start with eight early points. Yeah, in that first meeting against James Madison, he went for 13, but he was just three of 12 shooting. Here we have even Steven at 10. Edwards, the player of the year in the Sun Belt. Second effort, third attempt, and he gets that one to go. By no way should that same guy get two offensive rebounds in succession. One thing about Edwards, he struggled shooting the basketball last night, but he had another stat stuffing performance. He had six assists, he had six rebounds. They're 11 and 0 when he drops all five dimes or more. Impact the game in different ways if your shot is not falling. Fields draws contact, and he will go to the line for a pair. Earlier for Arkansas State, here's Darian Ford just kind of muscling his way off the window. And on the other end, Edwards not once, not twice, but the third time for the finish. Fields out of the state of Tennessee. It's a young man that... When Brian Hodson got the job, he told us, I was concerned if Caleb Fields left, I knew this was not going to be an easy year. Getting him to stay, buy in, be the leader. Remember, they completely revamped their offense. They went from 344 in tempo to top 100 and one of the top scoring teams in the country. Fields playing in his 149th game, all at Arkansas State, and we don't say that very often anymore. Usually the pass.
passport has been stamped a few times. A 12 12 game here in the early going. A good crowd here in Pensacola. Tapped around and a tight rope job that time by Friedel. Ten of the shot clock. Friedel, strong take. Rejected. There's the eraser. Nelson again with another block. Yeah, I think the Dukes are trying to do too much off the bounce. Reversal. Oh, is good. Beautiful take. And the first bucket for Terran Todd. Now, JMU runs an interesting one-two combination at the point when Green comes in. He's a little bit more offensive-minded. There's the big man, Carey. He gets it to rattle home. That's a young man who, Jalen Carey, when he came to campus, he was 315 pounds. He's now a spelt 245. Wheeling, dealing inside, leaving it short. The step back at almost an end one for Freddie Hicks. Champ Week rolls on with the West Coast Conference semifinals in Las Vegas at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. And 11.30 Pacific on ESPN2. Both games will be on the app. St. Mary's the number one seed. Again, that game will be at 9. Randy Bennett just continues to do great work out west. Yeah, their finals are tomorrow night along with four other conference championships. So guess what I'm calling it? It's basketball's version of Super Tuesday. I need you to brand that. <laughs> and let's split the royalties, please. Red Wolves have now scored on their last four possessions. They have a two-point lead. Watch the spacing that JMU plays with. Eventually, it'll be all five guys on the perimeter. Carey inside gets it to go. Jalen Carey, who is the brother of Vernon Carey, the former Duke Blue Devil who played a few years in the NBA. Carey was solid in the first meeting with Arkansas State. He had eight and seven. Pump fake. Back up to Fields. Thought about it. Measures a three. Left it short. Pinball action. And a foul. Or a turnover. It'll be a travel. Steps on Freddie Hicks. Take another look. JMU, the big fella with the soft touch. If you're talking about depth... Arkansas State only played seven guys in that game last night. Whereas the deeper team in JMU, they typically play eight to nine. So we'll see if that becomes a factor. Yeah, and maybe, maybe a little bit down the stretch as it relates to Fields, the point guard, because he will not come out of the game. Scary. Feeling it. Little bully ball. And draws another foul, and that'll bring us to immediate timeout with 11.55 to go. All tied up, 16 apiece, Arkansas State, James Madison, Sun Belt Championship. A few years in a row, and we've just watched it get better and better every time. I know it's a disappointing ending for Appalachian State, but that's a team and a resume with their net around 72, I think, that is worthy of an NIT at-large bid. Think about this. App State finishes with 27 wins. James Madison has 30. It's the only conference in all of college basketball, two teams of 27 wins or more. Do you know what App State's quad one and quad two record is this year? I'll help you. Bring it. 3-0. and oh. They did not lose a game in the top two quadrants. And of course, we're going to talk about James Madison's win at Michigan State to start the season. Arkansas State played anybody and everybody. Their non-con was brutal, something that their coaching staff believes Brian Hodson and company is the way to go to get better. Nice pass and an alley-oop to Nelson, who's been active here in the first half. Four points, four rebounds, and three blocks for the Red Wolves big man. Boy, Fields is so wonderful at finding guys, especially at the rim. Pretty much the offense that we expect for both these teams. Nice fade and fire. Left it short, tapped around, and finally gobbled up by who else? Caleb Fields in transition. In the trees, poked away, getting it back. And throwing up a brick that time was four. Both coaches are going deep into their bench to maybe answer what you were discussing earlier in terms of minutes played. 
Well, what about that as a former coach, the one-day prep, how that is different than a normal game to prepare for? You know who that impacts? The older guys. Guys like you and me. The, the age guys, the coaches, the players. They're so used to this man with their AAU days. They're used to playing four games in a day. I'm already a little fatigued, and I can see you <laughs> breaking a sweat, so it's clearly affected us. Watch this extra burst that Fields gets and attracts the defender. The lob pass is on point. Nelson plays above the rim on both ends of the floor. Ball comes into Hicks, the hero for Arkansas State, but that buzzer beating last night of Appalachian State. Down low, pump fake, shot up, off the mark. Second effort, blocked. Nice rim protection that time by the Dukes. I thought Randleman got away with a foul there on the second shot. Great take to the basket. That is Xavier Brown. He has been terrific in this first half with eight points. Scoring inside, scoring outside. He only averages 5.9 a game. Again, didn't enter the starting lineup until February. And then an unforced turnover that time by Arkansas State. The pass by Feltz is off the mark. Take another look at Brown. Gets a little rub screen. Watch the finish, though. Kind of uses his arm, NBA style, to yield off the defender. One point game, nine and a half to go in the first half here from Pensacola. So you want an offense? I want an offense. We've got it. He's getting plenty of it. And we're also getting some hard fouls. Randleman took it in the tall timber and got hammered. Now, Randleman, when these two teams played in Jonesboro, did go for four points in ten minutes. The high point transfer who played at high point for four years now gets a chance to shine here. Here's an area he has really struggled in, though, all season long. Just six for 14 on the freeways. The lefty triggers the first. Back iron on Khan. And the substitution Edwards will come in for JMU. JMU has not been to an NCAA tournament since 2013. The one before that was 1994. Who was the coach, you ask? Lefty Drizel, the legendary coach who had four teams to the big dance, recently passed away about a month ago. Now you missed two free throws, that's like a turnover. Red Wolves just won for their last seven from the field. Fields. Late shot clock situation for the senior. Long three on the way. Rims off. And a rebound to Bickerstaff. One of the best rebounders in the league. That time, GMU's defense dictated the quality of shot for Arkansas State. That's a heat shift by Xavier Brown, and the bank is open Monday night in Pensacola. Like I looked over at the JMU bench, and they're all like high-fiving each other. Like they all knew it was going in. He's got a game high 11 right now. Why not? Inside, beautiful move by Freddie Hicks. Freddie Hicks, a legacy. Senior play for Arkansas State, 95 to 9. Brown is in the zone. Another triple and 14 points for the X-Man. X marks the spot. Lead is five. The take is off the mark, and Bickerstaff rips down another rebound. Let me guess who's going to shoot this. Looking for a ball screen. Is he hunting another shot? He's hunting a drive, and he's hunting another shot that drops. 16 now for Brown. What does the next level do really well? When you've got a guy on a heater, make sure he gets all the shots. He is on an absolute heater, and so is this James Madison team. They've won 12 in a row entering this championship game. Double team. 
Kick out pass. Rise and fire three right between the eyes. It's Avery Phelps. 88% of his shots are from downtown. That's a good sign because he was just one for nine in this building in this tournament so far. The pride of Bono, Arkansas. A lot of hometown products on this Red Wolves roster. And a turnover. For JMU with 6.51 to go. It's a four-point game. Xavier Brown in the zone. Offense in this game certainly has been plenty of entertainment as we expected. Two evenly matched teams, two of the hottest teams in the country right now. And no player is hotter than number zero in white, Xavier Brown, who has a game-high 16. He's hit all six of his shots, all four of his threes. It'll be interesting to see what Arkansas State does in terms of an adjustment on Brown. Approaching six and a half to play. Strong take, left short, tapped around, and an offensive rebound for the Red Wolves. Pump fake and rejection out of bounds by Julian Wooden. The winningest player in program history, Wooden has been a part of 87 victories in a JMU at uniform. Loose basketball. Well, a little too loose right now on the handle for Arkansas State. That'll be another turnover five for the Red Wolves. Mike, the way Brown has played for James Madison, doesn't it feel like they should be up more than four? from the field. He's averaging six points a game. <laughs> yes. That was from the beach. He had all the clutch free throws to seal the deal in last night's win. Largest lead. Here's an open three. Again, Arkansas State will shoot several of them. And then the stick to it of this of Isaiah Nelson draws a foul. How about the ACC Men's Tournament presented by T. Rowe Price, North Carolina and Duke? Yeah, the Hall of Fame coaches are gone. The new wave, though, similar results. Mark, what are you looking for here? Uh, the number five seed, Wake Forest. They're on the bubble. They need to win that game to move on, I think. And I think that if they do take care of business, I think they're in. But it will be close. Uh, Brownell has done good work at Clemson this year. They're a six seed, but their non-con could help pave the way for an NCAA tournament appearance for the Tigers. What have you seen out of this game thus far that you like for both teams? Well, you, you come in, Mike, with a... It's a great question because you come in with a certain scouting report, and then a guy like Brown just blows that up. So you, now you've got to adjust on the fly. And we have all the players to worry about for JMU, and this is no knock on Xavier Brown. He'd probably tell you the same thing. But he's not the guy you thought would have 19. He's the better defensive point guard. No, he just, that is beyond the heat check. He finally misses a shot. He's human, now 7 of 8. But you have to allow that. Yeah. The guy's on a heater. you got to keep rolling the dice. Strong take, but Fields, not enough English on that finger roll. Here comes Brown. Whips it over to Friedel. Well, that was a great closeout by Ford. Inside, Carey uses that big 245-pound frame to carve out space. Now, one of the impressive things about James Madison, though, Mike, is their balance, the way they score. Out of bounds, it will remain Red Wolves basketball with under five minutes to go in this first half. How did Brown guard the ball and still get a hand on that deflection? He was telling the media last night after the win, he hit those clutch free throws, he said that comes from mental preparation. Me and my teammates, we play something called free throw golf. <laughs> yes. I've never heard of, but... Yeah, it was a scoring game. Friedel was trying to explain it to everybody. You kind of start with 10 points, and then you lose points if you miss a free throw. You, you didn't teach that in your I didn't. No, no, no. I have enough problems with the game of golf anyway. <laughs> Took it right into the tree. Squirts out of top five to shoot. 
into the corner. Wide open three on the way. Left it short. Tip back. No. Another offensive rebound. It's Hicks who's been ultra active. And whistle will keep it this way for Arkansas State. In league play, the Red Wolves rebound margin is only around plus two. But when you take a look, a deeper look at the numbers, their offensive rebound rate high in per game average. More than 12 a game. And right now, that's what's keeping them in this game because they are crushing JMU on the glass. And Freddie Hicks is keeping Arkansas State in this tournament. Brian Hodson telling us yesterday, you know, Hicks who transferred from Tarleton State, where he set all kinds of records for Billy Gillespie and company. Coach Hodson was telling us he had NIL offers to go to a number of SEC schools and bigger schools. He wanted to come back home and play where his dad set all kinds of records for the Red Wolves. And to my point, Mike, Arkansas State has 23 rebounds, 13 of them already on the offensive end. An ankle breaker by Edwards that time. And that's what earned him player of the year in the Sun Belt, those types of moves. Rangy, crafty, really more of a scorer than a shooter. A three-level scorer who's been so good all year long. He was a sixth man of the year last year in the Sun Belt. Under four minutes to go. High bank shot. No. Follow-up tip is in. Isaiah Nelson with a very active first half. Seven points, seven rebounds. Yeah, James Madison has no answer for Arkansas State on the glass. Backdoor cut. Reverse layup. Missed it, but a foul. KB Burdett, Kevin and Seth, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, JMU is a 30-win team. They lead the country in victories, but you don't want to have to play that gamble of getting an at-large bid. Well, it was interesting because I felt how uncomfortable Seth was because of the same thing we talked about. Yeah. You have a scouting report. Right. A guy goes off against you who's not... You know, one, two, three, four on the things that you need to defend. And all of a sudden, you're in a little bit of a panic mode. Uh, I mean, their top two scorers right now have barely scratched. Edwards has five. Friedel has not scored. Bakerstaff has been rather quiet as well. So just when you thought you had everything figured out, Xavier Brown puts up 19. Mike, I think this is an important last segment of the first half for the visitors on the scoreboard in terms of Arkansas State. They've got to hang around. Approaching the three-minute mark. A nine-point game. Tenacious defense here. Three on the shot clock. Oh, great drive. Beautiful take. Slicing and dicing his way to the bucket is Taryn Todd. He's been on a heater of late. Ten of the last 14 games, he's been in double digits. Took him a while to kind of get Edwards wrong-footed. They're trying to ISO carry, but that's too far out on the floor. See if Carey can get the ball back in the scoring zone. He just muscled his way to the block and makes it home the lead back to nine. He is a problem at 6'8", 245. Mentioned his brother, his father was a former NFL lineman. Baseline drive, spins out of there. Tough break for Fields. Here come the Dukes. It's Brown probing. A fade and fire. Wow. I mean, this is unreal. Xavier Brown has a 21-point half for a guy averaging six points a game. A new career high, if you will. And he's doing it in all kinds of ways. And efficiently, eight of nine from the field. Great response on the other end by Freddie Hicks. You mentioned earlier Arkansas State played a really aggressive schedule in the non-conference. How about this? Hicks went for 21 at Wisconsin, 21 at Iowa. He's been a weapon regardless of the competition. Brown finally misses one, and then a foul 
on JMU. Our ESPN NBA Wednesday doubleheader starts in Miami with the Heat hosting the Nuggets at 7.30 Eastern time. And then the Lakers are in Sacramento to square off against the Sacramento Kings. Coverage starting with NBA countdown at 7 o'clock. He's the coach, Mark Wise. I'm Mike Morgan. We appreciate you stopping by on this Monday night. Another ticket will be punched this time from the Sun Belt. JMU hasn't been since 2013. Arkansas State's only been to one tournament in its history, and that came back in 1999. A little over a minute to go in the half of a nine-point game. Another three, another miss. They've gone chilly from downtown. That's three of ten overall for Arkansas State, and just 29% from the field. Traffic. Same ISO. Mismatch. Big mismatch for Carey. Sandwich. Doesn't matter. No answer for number 15 and White. How about the X Factor performances JMU is getting from Brown and Carey? Largest lead for the Dukes. It's an 11 point advantage. Seven second differential game clock to shot clock. the drive drawing the foul it's Caleb Fields I talk about Carey and what he brings to the table he catches the ball out of the scoring zone but for a big guy to work himself back in that close to the basket that will make Arkansas State's coaching staff discuss that in the second 20 what do we want to do different in terms of maybe doubling their fire game Right, it's really a struggle right now for Arkansas State Fields, who's only a 61% shooter at the line, but they were down when these two teams played a month ago. Arkansas State ended up being down 13 at the half and played uphill the entire second half. Fields splits the freebies, and it's back to a 10-point game. JMU will play for the final shot. Is this going to be Brown? I would have to say Brown would be the top candidate. He defers, he kicks, they swing. Edwards launching and misses everything to end the half. But JMU led by Xavier Brown and a game high 20. 33 in the first 20 minutes. Hey, his head coach, Mark Byington, knows a thing or two about being on a heater when he was at UNC Wilmington. Thousand point score, all conference player. He's going to let a shooter on a heater shoot, and that's exactly what Brown did to the tune of 8 for 10 from the field. What do you want to see adjustment-wise? Well, forget about adjustments as Friedel hits his first basket. What about the adjustments for Arkansas State? Well, Arkansas State has to do a much better job offensively. They've done a good job at crashing the glass, but they have not been able to cash in. They've got 14 offensive rebounds, but in terms of second-chance points, they only have eight. You've got to be able to score. They only shot 29% in the first frame. They'll pull the trigger on a three. Missed it long. Again, that's Arkansas State's offense. They fire threes early and often. I thought it would be important for Arkansas State to win this first segment. Rydell, a transfer from South Dakota State, hit that first three. And I agree with you, Coach. It, it's imperative that Arkansas State show some life here in the opening stanza. Fields. To me, they've got to get Hicks more involved. He's got to be a factor offensively. Another three, and again, another miss. That time, Nelson can't find the iron. Yeah, Nelson, two for 14 on the year. I don't think that's where you want to go. A lot of green light for Arkansas State when they get close. This guy's always got the green light. Terrence Edwards, the Sun Belt Player of the Year. He can get those kinds of shots off because of his positional size. 6'6", six, six, wiry, 190 frame out of Atlanta, Georgia. A drive and a foul called. I believe that'll be on Bickerstaff. I think this was a late whistle, but the correct whistle. I didn't think there was any question that Todd got tripped along the way. 
Todd, whose mother passed away a year ago when he was playing junior college ball in Tallahassee. And he, there's a big three and answer. There is Terrence Todd. He needed some positive news after going through that tough time. Remember, he just finished his junior college eligibility. He didn't know where he was going to go. He wound up in Jonesboro, and it's been a marriage made in heaven. Rydell dumps it down low. Bickerstaff missed it. Good contest at the rim by Nelson. Strong drive. Foul. And landing awkwardly on his ankle was Ford. He got up immediately in pain and appears to be okay. There's Terran Todd. Uh, that passport has been stamped a few times. TCU, New Mexico. I mentioned playing Juco in the state of Florida. He's from Canada originally, and that's when his mother became ill and he had to play with a heavy heart and was able to go back up to Canada and visit his mom before she passed. And as if that wasn't a trying time enough, then he had to figure out where was the next chapter going to be? And thankfully, Arkansas State came calling, and he's been terrific this year, leading the Red Wolves in scoring at nearly 13 a game. Ford at the free throw line. There's a look at Todd, who's had five 20-plus games. Ford at the line only played, Mike, 80 minutes last year. And after tonight, he's going to cross over the 900-minute mark. The pride of Magnolia. Arkansas. That's a 11-point game, and you just get the feeling Arkansas State has a run in them, but they need to get it sooner rather than later. It just seems like the game they played a month ago. Here's Edwards. Fighting Friedel. Foul on the three, and a chance for a four-point play. <laughs> Noah Friedel, the former Jackrabbit, from San Diego, excuse me, South Dakota State. Watch the angle that Hicks takes on his closeout. It's right at the shooter. If you're going to close out out of control, you've got to go by the shooter. Two black goes right into Friedel. And Friedel with the four-point opportunity. He's out of T, South Dakota. That's T-E-A, population 6,200. And Coach Byington told us he wanted to recruit him at Georgia Southern. So right. I knew that was going to be too far for him to travel. But when he went to JMU, he stayed on him and said, I really want you to play for me, young man. Noah Friedel took the opportunity. He's been outstanding for this Duke squad. Banging bodies, and that'll be against Friedel. I like the action, though. I said get Hicks more involved. They can post him up. He's so difficult to defend once he gets the ball close to the block because he usually has a smaller player on him. Now, Freddie Hicks to the line, a 72% free throw shooter. And Hicks has had a marvelous tournament. He had 22 against Louisiana, and then 19 yesterday, including that game winner against App State. Love the story again about a young man who had offers to Power 5, Power 6 programs all across the country, decided to go back home, go to the alma mater of his father, Freddie Hicks Sr., who's in attendance tonight. Here's Brown up top. Had the hot hand of the first half. Friedel always capable of getting hot. Oh, rejected from nowhere off his pogo stick is Nelson. And that'll lead to an easy deuce on the other end for Fields. And the key word there was easy because Arkansas State has had trouble scoring. Let your defense help your offense. That'll wake up the crowd, many of whom drove eight hours from the Jonesboro area. Probes the baseline, sets up an open three, rims off, tapped out, and corralled by Brown. How about another open three? Edwards hits the second one. Terrence Edwards from downtown. Brown saw that play develop the whole time. Second chance opportunity. The first half was incredible for Brown as a scorer. He's up to eight rebounds, two assists now overall. 
Open look. Left it short. Field seems to have heavy legs in this game. Now the lefty from three. Arkansas State is a team. Heavy legs missing three after three short. Edwards missed his first three, but Wash Brown locating with the hammer pass again. And this time it's nothing but the bottom. Shot block leader in program history and a member of the only Arkansas State team that ever made the NCAA tournament some 25 years ago. There he is in attendance and watching his son and cheering on his alma mater. That team in 1999 led by head coach Dickie Nutt, who's still a favorite. And we wish Dickie Nutt the very best as he's battling some health issues, Mark. Yeah, he's going through cancer treatment. He's now the assistant coach at Missouri. Our best thoughts, I, we know he's watching tonight. Our best thoughts are with Dickie, the Nutt family, the Missouri basketball family, and now the college basketball family. Very well said. A turnover will give it to Arkansas State here with 15.32 remaining in a 15-point deficit. I love the adjustment by Brian Hudson to try something different defensively. They went to a 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter press. Look for them to stay in it if they can score. Red Wolves looking to heat up on offense now. Shooting is 30% from the field. Shot clock under five. Gonna have to be a desperation shot or a strong drive and a foul before the shot clock went to zero. At least that's the call for now. Freddie Hicks on a power move to the hole, and this is going to be reviewed. Bart Lennox, Byron Jarrett, and KB Burdett will go to the scorer's table. Take another look. When did the foul occur? Boy, that is really close. Well, you hit the, the key point. It's not when he released the ball. It's when did the foul occur. Correct. So they'll take a look at this in terms of, I know, I, this may be a quick look because I thought the foul happened first. There's the foul, and the clock hasn't gone to zero yet. Yeah, that's a good call. It's a good review, good quick review. Good look at Bart Lennox talking with Mark Byington. I don't know what Mark's trying to win in that argument, but it's not going to work. <laughs> What a fit that man has been for this James Madison program. He immediately came in, paid off dividends, started building and building, and they haven't been to a NCAA tournament in 11 years. They're 15 minutes and change away from doing just that. One of the things they're going to have to do is stop putting Arkansas State at the free throw line. Hicks solid here, 72% on the year. And the second one crawls over the front of the rim. And here's full court pressure. A little diamond and one. Keep the ball off the floor if you can. Break the timeline with two seconds to spare. Great feed and a finish down low by Bickerstaff. Fields has been quiet. Oh, three knocked down by Hicks. Maybe that'll get the Red Wolves going. You think he heard me? I think he did. <laughs> First three-pointer for Hicks. The Red Wolves, who very often live and die by the three, hit just the fifth, and then a beautiful take on the other end by Wooden. I love not only beating the pressure, but attacking the pressure. He went downhill with a head of steam, and now... Arkansas State cost it up, three on one, over to Bickerstaff and a goaltend. Yeah, I thought that ball already hit the glass. Now they might review this at the next dead ball at the under 12. Take another look. I think the ball hit the window first, and it did. If they review that, that will be a quick review. Now the largest lead now for James Madison, 16 points. Still plenty of time in this game, but Arkansas State has to put a run together. More great defense by JMU. Green hasn't played a whole lot tonight because Brown's That's been in the zone. Yeah, Brown has stolen his minutes. Edwards stops at the free throw line. A leaner, and boy. That's what we talk about, the wiry frame, the crafty shooting. 
And this little run has come about by the way James Madison attacked the press. We see so many guards want to catch it and dribble it all the time. They have caught it and moved it ahead. Much needed open three, knocked down by Fields, and a quick timeout called by Arkansas State. 13.30 to play. Wins, excuse me, eight weeks after that win at Michigan State. And App State also on that. Again, App State knocked off last night. 27 wins for the Mountaineers. 30 wins for this JMU squad, the most of any team in college basketball. Different kind of pressure that time. Handled easily. Red Wolves desperately trying to put together a string of stops. There's one. Fields. So good in the game last night. 23 points and six assists. Straight on three by Hicks. Too strong. Tapped around and back into the hands of Fields. That is Arkansas State's 16th offensive rebound. Okay, they're getting the threes off, but they are not dropping. Now have another opportunity. Deep three on the way. That one can't find it. And Arkansas State has just got ice cold from downtown. Strong drive, offensive foul. Well, we re very rarely see this anymore, <laughs> but I, my first thought was that's a good call. I think Nelson gets set before that foot leaves the floor. That's a great point. If, if you've been following college basketball this year, you know it's harder to draw a charge than ever with the rule adjustments. But I thought that was a good call. Yeah, Wooden would have been better served to go off one foot right. instead of two. Veteran officiating crew tonight. Bart Lennox, Byron Jarrett, K.B. Burdett, Mike Morgan, Mark Wise in Pensacola. You see the offensive rebounds. That's in favor of Arkansas State, but that's only good if you follow up with some major. Right. That's a tough shot. I mean, some of these are just difficult shots inside the three and then missing open threes. Rydell takes it all the way. He had a four-point play in the first half. He'll have a chance at a three-point play here. Take another look. Gets a little rub screen from Carey. Knows the shot blocker is there in terms of Nelson and just floats it up over the outstretched hands of Nelson. We talked about Friedel having 28 last night. He had 12 against Marshall. He's gone for three or more threes 13 different times this season. And I got to tell you, if James Madison continues to win, could, wins tonight and gets to the NCAA tournament and happens to win a game, I think Friedel will be one of the main reasons why. Couldn't agree more. And he's not just a three-point shooter. He does a lot of things for this squad in Raced immediately by his teammates after transferring from South Dakota State. A little bit out of control, but Fields gets the call. And that'll bring us 2007 to 2023. Finally calling it quits and what a magical career it was. I was a young assistant coach in the Sun Belt when Cliff was at South Alabama, so I've known him for a long time. And coach, congratulations. What a marvelous run. There's been some terrific coaches that have come through this conference over the years. And we might be looking at two good young ones right now for these respective schools. Make your second free throw, set your press. How do you break it if you're JMU? Fake a pass to make a pass, keep the ball off the deck. Very few dribbles, they break the timeline. Friedel gets it over to the elbow and into the hands of Carey. Carey parting of the red seat, a jump step by the big man, and then banks it home. He's now up to 13, so he and Brown now have combined for 34 points tonight. Unexpected heroes tonight for the Dukes. Take another look. Nobody moves on the switch, and so the big fella goes, okay. I'll take what you give me. If you give Jalen Carey a head of steam like that, <laughs> yeah. ain't nobody taking a charge. <laughs> He's in double figures for the ninth time this season. John 
attack. And another trip to the line for Freddie Hicks. You mentioned it earlier. Yeah. You, you just feel like Freddie Hicks is going to have to start taking control of this game because I, I don't see where else it's going to come from right now. Yeah, he's the only guy I think that get, can get himself to the free throw line. And if you're Arkansas State, I think one of two things are going to have to start happening. You're going to have to start making some threes, and you're going to have to get to the line. Record-breaking career at Tarleton State. Played for the once Kentucky, Texas A&M head coach, Billy Gillespie. Isn't that the fun of doing these tournaments? I mean, obviously, somebody gets to punch a ticket to the dance, the ultimate. You either make your dreams or right. break hotels. But some of the coaches that resurface at this level of basketball, it's great to see. Carey wants another paint touch. Mismatch. Mouse in the house for Carey, finds the cutter, execution perfect to Raekwon Horton. Knocked down, left short again. That has been the theme for Arkansas State. Those threes have been short all night long. And remember, they make more threes than anybody else in this conference. Another three, nothing short about Michael Green's triple. 11 threes for James Madison. From the wing. I mean, Mark, I don't know what else to say, but they're all short. Watch Carey's eyes. Watch him look for the cutter and find the teammate. That's a nice movement without the ball by Horton. And then Green knocks down the straight on three ball. That's 10 threes made by JMU tonight. I know you mentioned they're young. They certainly got more <laughs> endurance than you and I do, but it seems like some time yeah, I agree. for Arkansas State. Again, the depth maybe has come into play because they only played, as you mentioned, the seven guys last night, and especially Caleb Fields. This is a team that... When we talked to Brian Hodson last night, what did he tell us about a road trip that they took where they kind of got waxed in Louisiana, lost an overtime game at ULM, and he, he told his guys, he said, look, I know we're long enough and athletic enough to be really good offensively, but we've got to play a little bit better defense, and they have gotten better in the way they have played down the stretch in the way that they have won 10 of their last 12. And you mentioned... The three-point prowess, that's what he teaches. He's very heavy in analytics. They love the threes and the layups. When they're in practice, if you hit a mid-range jumper, you get one point. You don't get two. That's his way of telling you that's yeah. not a good shot. 7-2 run right now for the Dukes. And the largest lead for JMU. And Fields, who doesn't even practice a lot live, they talked about all the ailments that he's had. And so, so he doesn't go much live five on five. A flurry of short threes fired up by Arkansas State. And whatever is left in the tank, they're going to have to dig it out in the final nine and a half minutes to have a shot here tonight. Mike, you've heard me say this before. When I evaluate a team, I want to know how many different ways can you win games. How many different guys do I have to prepare for? When I look at James Madison, I see a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, that's the player of the year in the Sun Belt. He's only got 15. There's a much-needed three to stop the bleeding. Darian Ford. Maybe that's how good Edwards has been this year in the fact that he's been rather quiet. And you look on the stat sheet, and he's got 15 and four. Here's this five-out action that they run a lot of. That looked good. Goodness. Yes. It is raining threes for the Dukes. Michael Green drops another one. And that is a dozen now three-point shots for James Madison. What's good about that is that Green went through a major three-point slump in the month of January and was just two for 23. That didn't look like it, did it? Not at all. It's come a three-point contest here in the second half. You joined us late. It all started with the man that just had the ball. 
Zero and white, Xavier Brown, he set the tone with 21 first half points. We had the exact angle on this shot and it looked good from the minute it left Green's hands. He's a grad transfer from the Bronx, New York. JMU located in Harris, Harrisonburg, Virginia. They've got him from all over the map. Green playing in his 147th game. Eventually, those numbers are going to be less <laughs> gaudy when the COVID year finally expires. But I should also mention this. Caleb Fields is playing in his 149th. We've seen that more and more, have we not? We've seen yeah, a number of players flirting with the 150 mark, which used to be unheard of in college basketball. Well, here's Edwards at the point. Edwards. And throws that one away. Miscommunication on who was cutting, who should have been in the corner. You always want to occupy the opposite corner in any offensive set. Right now, that man, Mark Byington, can smell his first NCAA tournament as a head coach. Again, he coached several years at Georgia Southern, got the call for the job at JMU, had a feeling this would be a golden opportunity. And he can cash in if he can hold on here the final seven minutes and change. Nice job by Horton to take away that Kansas cut along the baseline. Edwards, great ball movement, sets up the cutter, and an easy bucket for Horton. Yeah, JMU getting right now whatever they want offensively. There's a rare dime tonight for Fields. Seems like we've gotten to a wreck game now. Everybody, we're just going to let you score. <laughs> Defense, very optional. <laughs> well, certainly the defensive intensity has changed by virtue of the score that might be a goal 10 they're going to take a look at it that could be an and one by the time they check at the scorers table for the second consecutive year how about stetson going to their first ever ncaa tournament jalen blackman went for 43 in that high scoring win over austin p and his numbers in that game 12 for 22, 5 for 9 from deep, 14 for 17 at the free throw line. So congratulations to Donnie Jones and company. Donnie Jones, former UCF and Marshall, Marshall coach. That was before Marshall was in the Sun Belt. The pride of Deland, Florida, the Stetson Hatters. JMU trying to be added to that list here in the final seven minutes from Pensacola. No goaltend on that last possession, by the way. And a costly turnover right now. You just have no margin for error if you're Arkansas State. I think Arkansas State got a little shell shocked the way you and I did in the first half yeah. with Xavier Brown and the, and the way he kind of took over the game. Yeah, there's no question. And he hasn't scored another point in this game. Brown has it. There's Bickerstaff. T.J. Bickerstaff, grandson of Bernie Bickerstaff, the legendary NBA coach. His father is Tim and his uncle is now the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Some pretty heavy bloodlines there for the Bickerstaff family. They haven't needed him tonight. Yeah, he's one of the best rebounders in the league. He's menacing trying to keep him off the glass. You're right, they haven't needed him much at all in this game. Not a lot of offensive rebounds when you keep making your shots. <laughs> JMU is at several. And they're shooting 64%. That's an incredible number. Now yeah, that'll be augmented just a bit more. And going up. Terrence Edwards, the Sun Belt Player of the Year. Give him 19 points. Rangy, crafty. He's really good with the floater game. He's a guy, he's a redshirt junior, he's a four-year guy. It just goes to show you some patience, some time for your game to develop. Drive and kick. 
Hicks with the floater. Just so powerful, his upper body. Fires missed it short. Bickerstaff fought for it, but it will be an over the back foul on TJ Bickerstaff. Mentioned the family ties to TJ Bickerstaff now in his final year. There's Bernie on the left. Who did Bernie not coach in the NBA might be the bigger question. <laughs> and of course, JB doing a great job coaching the Cleveland Cavaliers, having a great year this season in the NBA. Father Tim on the far right. Mike, you could have got that picture in after he scored instead of after he fouled. <laughs> Sometimes that's just the way it works. Uh, I'm sure everybody in that picture awfully proud of what TJ has been able to do. The newcomer of the year in the Sun Belt Conference. Ten double double, make it eleven double doubles on the year. Nelson's had a good game. He's sporting with a double-double of his own. Eight points, ten rebounds. Yeah, you kind of know what you're getting with Nelson, night in and night out. I mean, he averages nine and se seven per game. But in the two games here, he went for eight and 13 last night. The night before against Louisiana, went for nine and eight. So every coach wants, to, wants a consistent, what can I expect from this player? Nelson gives Brian Hodson that. Down to seven, Friedel. Back iron, tapped around and reeled in by Nelson. Now he pass. Intercepted that time by Brown. Friedel read that though and disrupted the timing. Clock is the ally of JMU. fans in purple starting to get awfully excited about what's on the horizon for this team and this program this team is good enough now that i've seen them live two straight nights they're good enough to win a game in the tournament uh, this would be win number 31 as we will step aside with 316 to go yes they're trying to make it 13 in a row this time out and trying to hit the dance floor for the first time in 13 years as a program. The first time for Mark Byington, who spent seven years at Georgia Southern before making his way back to his home state. He's a native of Salem, Virginia. Might a year for this JMU program all across the board. Here's a news flash, though. When you shoot 62%, when you make 11 of 19 from the arc, that's 58%. You're going to win a lot of games. You're going to win a lot of games. I, I think what's important to know, too, because we talked about their scoring prowess, top scoring team in the league. They can defend and rebound, too. It's not like they're a one-trick pony. No, they're defensive. The way they guard the arc, their defensive three-point percentage, according to Kim Palm, number three in the country. So if you can win the arc, they're going to have to do a better job rebounding in the NCAA tournament than the job they have done here tonight. Auto secure a double-double for Nelson. Ten points, 11 rebounds on that LEU. Friedel is one of those players, Mike, I think he has more points than dribbles <laughs> on a nightly basis. He's a lot of fun to watch. Just so efficient. Bounce pass down low. Bickerstaff absorbs the contact and banks it home. He almost shot that blindly. Oh, yeah. Under two minutes to go. The Dukes on their way to an NCAA tournament bid. <laughs> I love the look that JMU's players gave each other. Like, wasn't that supposed to be your guy? 
Brown is the guy that got it all started. 21 points, a career high in the first half. He's taken one shot in the second half. They haven't needed it because as he has kind of cooled off, everybody else around him has heated up. And as you mentioned, Mark, what I like about this team, sometimes you have a, a quality mid-major team goes to the big dance, and it's based on one guy. And if that one guy is off, they're done. They're oh, toast. Or that one thing. thing. Yeah, that's exactly right. Edwards has it poked away. Seven on the shot clock. All of that is academic. James Madison is going to punch its ticket to the NCAA tournament. Mark Byington, by the way, was a three-year starter for the Seahawks of UNC Wilmington. He scored over a thousand career points. And he told us yesterday, he said, guys, I remember as a player being in this situation three times as a player, he made it to the championship game, one game away from the tournament, all three times they lost. So he has been waiting for this moment. And obviously so too has this JMU squad as the backups come in now. What a moment for this team. Knowing that Sunday night, their name will be called. I'm just curious on the bench, who has the scissors? Can we find who's got the scissors? Is it, is it, does the trainer have the scissors? Somebody's got them, and they're going to go to work here in about a minute and 10 seconds. Crowd chanting JMU here in Pensacola. It's a fun trip, even without the basketball. Enjoy a little beach time, but when you can clinch a championship and a historic win, that makes it oh so sweet for the JMU faithful. And a whistle with 52 seconds remaining. I'm just curious if maybe Brian Hodson's going to get Caleb Fields out of the game. What a career he has had for the Red Wolves. And what a year for Coach Hodson. Uh, you have to think great things are on the horizon as he enters his second year next year with this program. And you know he can recruit. He did it at Buffalo. He did it at Alabama. He will do it at Arkansas State. What a great moment. Good for you, Coach Hudson. And Kayla Fields meant so much to this program and so much to this team to even get to this point. Mike, if I'm on if I'm on the floor for JMU now, I don't get to play much. There is no such thing as a good assist. <laughs> get your shot up. Got to be an awfully good feeling, Mark. You know, as a former coach, when nothing stands in your way other than a few precious seconds from having a historical win, and that's exactly what this would be a historical win for Mark Byington and the Dukes of JMU. Free throw rattles out for Jarrell Pope. That's okay. They're going to get another possession on the two for one. Another chance to jack it up for Mark Wise. Never <laughs> bashful about taking a shot with a heavy lead. An ocean of purple on his feet right now at the Pensacola Bay Center as they can smell a historic victory. See what you get for trying to pass? <laughs> a turnover and a breakaway slam the other way. What a dominating performance, though, by James Madison. Now, the tone was set early on in this game. A 10-point halftime lead. They never took the foot off the gas. Mark Byington and the Dukes of James Madison a 20-point victory is the way it will wind up. And JMU, for the first time in 11 years, is going dancing.